Typhoon Death Tear back with the Boogeyman. Okay, I think this is gonna be the final battle. So let's do this. Oh, okay, here we go. Z button. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Ow. Okay, whoa. Okay, Z button is normal attack. Why is he? He's, ow! He's not saying anymore anything either, so. How am I gonna fight him? Okay, I can. Okay, but. Oh! That's two taunts. Okay, 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 okay. I got it, I got it. This shouldn't be too hard, but if he does. Okay, I need to be careful with this. I can attack him from a little bit farther, but. If he hits me, I'm instantly down to uh, 30 less health. Okay, this freaking easy. Why is he making it so easy? He's not laughing anymore. He's not saying anymore either. He's all covered in blood. But he makes it so easy. Why is this so... Okay, he's gonna die. I kind of want to know what happens if I die now. Oh, did I do it? Okay, whatever. Let's just keep going. That was too easy. Did it just really end like that? Where do you think you're going, Lance? Wait, that, that was too easy. He didn't laugh anymore. All of a sudden, his face covered the blood, and this was the end battle? I'm okay. gonna find them. They've been gone way too long. You should you stay should here. forget what he said. It'll be a burden on him to move around on our own. Well, then after all said and done, we'll tell him we did just what he said. Yeah. Uh. Of course, he might have all gone stone cold by that time. Don't joke about things like that. Sounds like a joke to you? Uh, we got two, maybe three corpses around here. Probably more. What part of don't, don't you get? Stop, you two. Don't fight. We'll go search together. No, just stay in there. I'll lead the way. Sophie and Shirley, you hold hands. And Lance, you watch the rear. P Papa. You really want to go? No, yes, you should just stay here. Together. And there's something I'm curious about. What's that? About who it is, because this I'm wondering that too. Just be a great big farce. What do you mean? Let's be going. No, just tell me. I don't know how long this game is gonna be, because that can't be Helena, an end fight, right? Where are you, Helena? Okay, I don't want David to walk on his own. <laughs> I really don't. Is she in there? What was that? Oh, I can't walk. Wait, what? The art statue? Oh, damn! Oh, she's stuck! Aww! What? Helena! David! Oh my god, she's alive! Thanks God! Are you okay? Oh, thank God. I... That man knocked me out. I woke up here. I was unconscious the whole time. Oh, poor Helena. Keith! Helena! What would happen if I died to the boogeyman? Would it just give a game over or Keith, what? Where are you? Don't walk off on your own, Helena! The boogeyman can't be dead from that, right? Uh, this, uh... Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move better than you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, why was this battle so easy? What's in that big head of yours? Oh, are we gonna see who it is now? Is my theory gonna be correct? Who is that? Is it Brandon? Really? Brandon? Yeah, oh my god, what? Whoa! Okay, hold on. I had an expectation that Brandon would be really dead, uh, but this messes up my whole theory. I thought it would be Eric. Because Eric, the old, okay, wait, 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 before I go up, first I thought it was Dick, right? And then I thought it was Eric, because how does he know all the stuff about David and his mom? And Eric was the one who in, uh, interrogated David when he got um, picked up by them after the events of the group man. Eric uh, asked all about the stuff about David, so I thought maybe it would be Eric, and he's, because he's barely mentioned at all, so he would be suspicious because, oh, who cares about Eric, he's barely mentioned at all. And then Dick's mentioned the whole time, so then I thought it was Eric. But then he mentioned all about, oh, you got an enemy, and when I let David die, there was a conversation with um, Keith and Dick about the enemy, and the enemy is inside your head, and you just shoot yourself so the enemy is gone. So then I thought, oh, my, it messes up my theory, so it is Eric. But what? Then who killed Brandon? In the first place, when the Pokemon was standing there and literally decapitated Brandon. How can this be Brandon then? What? I don't get it. How is this Brandon? What? 
Uh oh. No. No! Oh my god, no! Oh my god, no! You're, you're Brendan? Why? How can it be Brandon when the Boogeyman literally decapitated Brandon? Stop moving around. Uh oh. Jeez, Elena. We have to stop the bleeding. Blitz! Oh, please don't tell me I have to do something about that. Richard, help me out. S Sophie, find something to tie him with. How can it be Brandon? I didn't expect that at all. Keith. Oh my god. <laughs> Got you. Oh, that's sad. No, don't tell me he's gonna die. You. Oh, please don't tell me he's gonna die. How oh, not? When we get home, oh, let's finish our conversation. Don't tell me he's gonna no die. More running. I don't get why this is Brandon. Keith, stay with me, please. I didn't expect it to be Brandon at all. Oh. Don't tell me he's gonna die, I swear. Watch the ending, of course. Holy crap! Oh, oh there's Dick. Well, the servants and Stevie. Ten people died, all told. I'm sure glad to be alive now. Feeling glad to even have air to breathe. Oh. Listen, don't you say a word about all this. Especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. I really thought it would be Dick. <laughs> oh, bribery. Where's that money coming from? In my own pockets. Listen, you guys can distort the truth all you want, and I won't say a peep. Because that's freedom of the press. But this? Uh -oh. This is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. <laughs> I hate cops, sure. But I hate gossip, too. I won't ask for money. And I won't say a peep, because I'm grateful to the guy. Now quit hounding me. I'm really confused but right now. as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. I just can't wrap my head around it. I talked to Brendan at dinner. Heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. Yeah, why is it Brendan? So I don't get promoted. it. Guy's gone silent. Sounds like he convinced you he was a... Uh... Goody two shoes, but I bet you heard a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing your lot should be writing about. Nobody knows people's past usually, but it's easy to fool you into thinking otherwise with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead them by the nose. Okay, I'm totally. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm being he silent. You off I wanna... and try to kill you. What a farce. I'm trying to follow this. Not sure of the motive yet. But he was pretty systematic about it all. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all the tour attendees. Even did a background check on me. I really don't get how it could be Brandon. I really thought on it would you? be Eric. Why? Because I was going to be on that tour. No wonder oh, damn. I thought he knew me. The hell? So he just researched us? That's the oldest trick in the book for us. Saying, I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person, so you can uh, control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He knew that tactic well. Like he did with David. Seeing right through people without any tricks. That's what makes a real monster, hint. So that's why Sophie said it was the real Boogeyman, because the Boogeyman is actually the In monster, case, but without the disguise. He just used money and connections to dig up people's past and play the part of a monster. But why? But the research wasn't to select candidates. So he just picked randomly. Damn, was he just in it for fun? I, I So I was right when I said I don't think that Brandon is dead. No, my turn to ask questions. What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you got. But how can... Who then who was decapitated? That was Brandon too, right? First, Brandon, or Bookie Rapper. What kind of man was he? How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion. That's how I saw him. He said such terrifying things without a care. He hardly showed any human feelings. He really was like a monster. But Brandon seemed all happy after care, so I he don't get told it. Me he was a real jester. Jester? Absolutely not. I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. 
He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why do you think that? When my daughter went missing, and I panicked thinking that man might have taken her, Keith told me something. This what? was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration. So if he did take Sophie, he'd show off proof of it, meaning she was still safe. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but indeed, evidently, there were many dead bodies left around. As Keith said, my daughter hadn't fallen into his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual about what he'd said. Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snap, and his corpse was quickly dropped into the basement. Yeah. Is that odd? Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently from the other victims? Okay, that's the question, but... Brendan got decapitated, so how did he... So who was the boogeyman who decapitated Brendan? That's what Trust I don't get. I watch you investigating it. He's got some keen insight. I'll give him that. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? That's the only thing I can, don't, don't get. The boogeyman cut off Brendan's head. So who was this body of Brandon? No, well, I just... I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction about the rest. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Is he still alive, though? Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Exactly! Was it a doll? Then it was a talking doll. Right, you are. Packed with neat little blood packs, it seems. But he was muffling. Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up. And it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. Ah, but it doesn't explain the On muffling. all those flashy rave lights, he dropped the corpse down below so it was impossible to check it closer. That's actually and since smart. since Keith saw the tour conductor killed right after that, of course, he'd think Brendan was killed, too. If Damn. I said something, maybe this could have been resolved sooner, but I was paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter, even when Keith was running all over the place for us. Damn. That's Didn't actually... Keith did all that because he wanted to. That's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. I really thought it was Eric. Then again, Brendan does know the castle basts. Now, little lady. Can we hear from you, too? Hear what? Anything. What you thought. What you noticed. Damn. Well, I knew he was a fake. Because I've met the real boogeyman. How do you so explain that? Not this tale again. Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. Go ahead, please. Oh. Beating the real boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder, but his hand was cold as ice. Right away, I knew it wasn't human. Mm -hmm. That guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. So he had probably huh. a cloth with nails? So Boogeyman's hands are cold, eh? Uh, tell that to my little squirts. That's really Anything weird, else though. You noticed? I feel like he might get angry if I say this. I won't. Tell me. What? That guy had this cold and emotionless air. Like, you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of Mr. Keith. Oh, <laughs> okay. You still think that way now? Mm-hmm. Not even. Because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. He was like, Don't worry your papa ever again! <laughs> this Sophie man. Red paint? On his... face? This video is going to be a little longer. It was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurt stuff. Really? Keith told me he had a weird paint on a torn paper bag. No, oh, but how can and he move the smell? Did you see any red graffiti in the castle? Or many monsters? Hear any phones ringing? Oh, so Keith, it's all in no, Keith's hats? No, I didn't. So that the entire room painted a red when they had that long ass Mr. conversation? Hoover, you're colorblind, if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the paint. I really thought it was yeah, Eric. but it's white and pink I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, and you, miss? I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? 
Don't get me wrong. I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing too. So Keith is hallucinating. But then, that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. They are talking to him like in the present, so what that means mean? he's still alive, right? Because people don't always see the same things you do. Ha! Reference to the crook man. Because of what happened with David and the crook man. Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks after the fact. Is not oh. everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role is just to assist. I'm going to report your testimonies to them, and that's that. I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. Damn, this really was a plot twist. I didn't expect it to be Brandon at all, because he muffled. So I thought it was it was him for real. When their son died, I thought my own life was over too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come anyway. I Aww. don't remember anything about what I did back then. But I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wailed and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair. I feel so bad for okay. Helena. Eventually, I adjusted to life without her son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. Aww, that's I so sad. Broken. And so at Keith, over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. I feel bad for both he of them. He was always supporting me, so he never faced up to himself. I can't imagine what it's like to lose a child. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him. Since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I... I couldn't repeat anything to Keith. Oh, it's so sad. I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. And that's why she wanted a divorce. So, even if we're far apart, as long as we can laugh again, and that's the best choice I can make. Ah. My wife always brings me more milk before I go to bed. And last Father's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to get to sleep. And the kids cooking, I'll be blunt. It ain't good. Aww. But I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys, have got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can fight day after day, because he knows you're waiting at home. As much as I tease him about it. <laughs> Don't think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants too. No, oh, I like him. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled. Even though he was stabbed and wounded. I really hope Keith is alive. And what do you say? Got you. No. Because he finally got what makes him happiest. I like him. He's a nice guy. But, man, too much discrepancy between your guys' testimonies and Keith's. Uh -huh. It's not like I report this to the department. Because he sees all the red stuff. Hey, Helena, you went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk with him now? Yes, he's still alive. I like that. I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there's a place he's going to visit. It's Sunscrape. And I'm planning to head there myself. Yeah, it's Sunscrape. Sorry for talking much in between it, or else it goes too silently. Ah. What is that around her head? It looks kind of weird. I guess it's bandages. 
Yeah, it's bandages. It just kind of looks weird. Uh oh, he's gonna cry, isn't he? Yeah, he's crying. Aww. I've always wanted to cry like this. I'm I never dead alive. forgot about him. Not for a single day. Ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing, like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I might be able to fool everyone, even myself. Aww, he cropped it all off. so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage. But I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. And I saw you were safe, and you came up to me. Finally, I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever, because I promised I'd protect his mom. This is so sad. Take off the blindfold. I'm gonna laugh, even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad. And if I'm sad, I'll cry. First, I guess they'll have to be counseling. There's something seriously wrong with my head, it seems like. It's gonna be a busy time. And it's gonna be so busy, I won't be able to do it alone. You got Helena now? Helena. I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. <laughs> I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. Aww. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide. I've decided. Haven't you too? Oh, that's really cute. We only ever have one umbrella, so we hold it together. That's cute. And it's fine if we get a little wet, because it'll soon be sunny again. Oh, that's really cute. Yay! Happy end, come rain, come shine. I got the good ending. Oh, yeah, I'm happy now. Okay, I'm still gonna try to get the other endings. Um, Might as well do it now. Uh, let's wait for the credits to be over. All right, there you have it, the end. That was an amazing game. The plot twist, I didn't expect it all. I really... Achievement unlocked, come rain, come shine. I really didn't expect it to be Brandon. Congratulations on beating the Boogeyman, and thank you for playing this game. Additionally, so if you, additionally so if you've played the previous two games in the series. This game was fully voiced with the help of voice actors. Due to the author's fit fatigue, there's no bonus scenario, but I did receive comments for, from each of the actors, so, so take the upper door if you're interested. The Something Man series, The Strange Man, has come to a turning point. The general storyline ends in the next game. I have plans for serious and silly extra chapters afterwards, so please play if those if you're interested. Wait, the general storyline ends in the next game, so that means it's gonna be an entirely different story, right? In the Hanged Man. Lastly, once more, congratulations on beating the game, and thank you for playing. Okay, what's this? What's this about? Strange Man Siri No 4, the Hanged Man. Hey, there's the Sandman! Hi, Sandman! Hey, what's up? Oh, you're gone. The last, the next game is the, uh, there you are again. Search band series number two, the Sandman. Hi. <laughs> watch bonus scene. Okay, let's do it now. Hi. If it's not too long, I'll watch it now. Oh, wait. How okay. How many times have we come here again? Okay, this is going to be a longer one. Ugh, I can't stand it. We've told them the same story over and over. There's gonna be rumors at school about Sophie frequenting the police station. Now, Sophie, don't complain. The police are doing their best. And it's been a month now. This must be the last time. I'm sure of it. I hope. Does my princess require a beverage to quell her temper? What shall it be, your majesty? 
<laughs> Orange juice. <laughs> I'll go buy some. That's cute. Thanks. Bye. Can I walk? Okay, I can't. Is she gonna see the Sandman? Hey, when those dogs attacked me, you saved me, right? Oh! I you the reason those dogs would fall asleep so quickly. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aha! He still a loves her. Time lately. I'm getting along great with Papa and Anne, and Reagan. Well, if she wants to get along, I'll give her a chance. He still loves her. He's still blushing. Things are so much better than when I carried all my burden myself. Now I know there's someone always looking out for me. He saved her from the doggies. Sometimes I really miss you. You're doing okay, right? How about the other fairies? You know, I... <laughs> Sorry to put it. <laughs> Hold on, wait. That's the wrong idea. I I'm not a weirdo or anything, okay? Don't touch me. Rats with a thing for daydreaming aren't the most comfortable people to be around. I I'm not daydreaming. <laughs> Keep it between us, but I've met some, some fairies. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't believe me? No, I do. I met one when I was a kid, too. Really? Yeah, this hobo in the area always had a head full of dandruff, so I called him the dandruff fairy. <laughs> I've got a co-worker who eats non-stuff cup noodles, the cup noodle fairy. Want to be introduced? Aw, oh, that's mean. A 37-year-old who believes in fairies ain't exactly socially adjusted, don't you think? <laughs> but hey, if they do exist, put a request to one of your fairy friends to give me some wings. Big, fluffy pink ones. What do you use those for? Just want some wings. Why not? Mr. Detective wanna fly away. <laughs> huh. You angry? <laughs> Better step off. One of your friends might cast a spell to turn me into a fluffy white kitty. <laughs> Maybe instead of filling your head with stupid fantasies, fill my chest a little. It's so pathetic I can't even look at it. Don't be so mean! Come on! <gasps> <laughs> oh, now the seven is mad! Did you see those eyes? What's wrong? He can't sleep now, can he? I haven't been able to sleep since last <laughs> night, even though I'm sleepy. It's weird. He had those mad eyes and it's like, nope, Did not letting Keith sleep. Medicine? Yep. Anxiolytics. Sleeping pills. Guess they're not working. Oh, he pissed off the Let's Sandman. Let's talk to each other then. Before you know it, he'll be sound asleep. And he'll be morning. Mm-hmm. Don't you need to sleep? You don't have to stay up for me. It's fine. I'll stay with you until you're snoozing away. That's cute. Yeah, sure. She's asleep now and he is Maybe isn't. some exercise would have been better. <laughs> oh, okay, that was actually pretty funny. Okay, what's this? Few character bios. Keith Baring. I don't care if this video is longer, whatever. Local police inspector, rank de detective 3. Cold and on face, but determined. He has an obsession with protecting people out of guilt over his son's death. Didn't want to become a detective at first, but met Helena while finding a colleague. And ended up joining the force to win her over. Sharp-tongued. He often let things slip in front of his boss, which, which his son would later imitate. Dick is his boss, but also, like an but also like an undesired friend who gets along with the whole family. After the incident, he goes for counseling at Dick's suggestion. He hates liver. Helena Baring, Keith's wife. A gentle, lovable woman. Appears carefree, but is strong at her core. She is highly expressive, laughing and crying often. She met Keith as a student and quickly married him after graduating college. A year later, they had a son. She suffered emotionally for years after her son's death, but has recovered by now. She doesn't eat meat, now not because she's a vegetarian, vegetarian, just because she hates it. Her hobby is collecting tea from all over the world. David Hoover, age 27. Hey, you was age 26 in the other game. The crookman's, uh, crookman's hero works for a trading company. He's made a complete turn f from his p previous moodiness. Married to Shirley for three months now. They kept their names. An honest fellow, but extremely unlucky. He's athletic and strong, but a little slow up on the uptake. He challenged his friend Paul to a chili dog contest, and Paul got gastritis, so he couldn't attend the tour. 
Scared of dogs due to due to a traumatic incident as a kid where he was chased by one by one for an hour. Sophie, age 17 but acts like a 12 years old. High school student, Rich's daughter, the Sandman's heroine and a li lively girl. Didn't like didn't like her dad for a long time, but they reconciled. Maybe as a result, she seems a little too attached lately. Somewhat cheekier than before, but still di diligent, diligent as ever. Gets along well with David and Shirley as older friends. A little uneasy as girls at school are getting boyfriends. Not finding anyone she likes is her main worry for now. Loves ice cream, because the Sandman has her crystal. Lance Cannell, ex-journalist photographer. Works for a small publisher, snarky about everything, but can get freaked out easily. As a journalist, he chased incident to write articles. And though sarcastic, he was known to hit the mark. Dislikes police due to what drove him out of journalism. Was, think was thinking about making some pa passes at Helena and getting Keith angry at him to cause a scene. Richard, works for a cra Works for a credit company. Diligent and cheerful, but has a timid side. Rather compassionate and sentimental. His daughter often blinds him at, to all else. It's been over 10 years since losing his wife, but has no intention of remarrying. Mistook David for Sophie's boyfriend at first and got angry, but that's been cleared up. And they get all along now. A real drinker who collects drinks. He likes scotch best. He actually suspected the boogeyman was Brandon, but was too focused on his daughter to, kill, to tell Keith. Shirley, David's wife, a pharmacist, beautiful, strong-willed strong -willed and cool. Hates to rely on anyone and tries to do it all herself. She often fights with David, fawns over Sophie like a little sister. Dick Anderson, local, local police manager, ranked lieutenant one. He is direct boss who understands him well. He has a wife and two children. He's stager and face frightened people, but he's gentle and doesn't raise his voice over little things. Gets along with both Keith and Helena. Eric Simpson, local detective, detective one. Keith sub... sub more than it. Ambitious but hates to do busy work. His laziness got him stuck with the scariest two at the station, Dick and Keith. But it's yet to prove detect effective. When, Keith, when David was taken in a, in a while back, he questioned him. He sympathized with him and was a bit relieved to learn he was alright after the incident. That's why I thought it was Eric. He questioned him so he knew all about David. Stevie Small, tour conductor for the agency NA Travel, became a member of the Livingstone Castle project and decided to run this test tour. He and a Castle Knight servant ended up as Brandon's Dumont murder victims, born in Connecticut, Connecticut, and that's where he now rests. Todd Baring, oh, he was only five years old, damn. Keith and Helena's son, kind of timid but cheery and honest, clever and alas, quickly learned the bad words Keith used. At age five, he was run over by a truck and died. And you don't see anything about Brandon. This the crook man. The Crookman won, and then this is the Sandman, and then the fourth game, which is the Hankman, and then let's go through this door. This is the VIP room for the fully voiced versions voice actors, as well as the translator. You can hear about everyone's other projects and thoughts on acting in this game. Alright. Oh, damn. Okay, um, yeah, uh, let's do this. Why not? Good morning, Hi. good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're playing this. My name is Winter Johnson, and I'm the voice of Richard Grundler. Okay, that's super cool. Congratulations on getting through this story of death, fear, and loss. I hope the emotional scars will fade in time. Working on this game has been a very fun experience for me, and working with the developer has been a delight. She has been very encouraging and reasonable, yet is not afraid to mention when something needs reworking. Seeing the story grow and watching these characters develop and change and fight and die has been fascinating to watch. As an actor, I am so happy to have been given the opportunity to help bring the story to life. Yeah, Uri is an amazing game maker. I hope you enjoyed playing the game as much as I did acting in it. That is so cool. Winter also voiced the doctor. The, the doctor? Hi. Oh, the doctor I'm from. Uh, I do oh. the voice of Sophie. I'm really glad I got to be in this game, especially that I got to play Sophie. I really related to her story in The Sandman, so it's just really awesome that I'm doing her voice, you know? Um, I'm also working on a game, though it has a long way to go before it's finished. It's called Dollhouse, and it'll also be a puzzle exploration type game. Cool. Hello, I'm Manly Badass Hero, the voice of Dick Anderson. I've been a big fan of the Strange Men series, so when I saw there was auditions, I sent some improv and general recordings, and not only was I accepted, I also found out Uri was a fan of my playthroughs of the games. Which, needless to say, made me feel a bit giddy. Yeah, he was a. I thought he was. He's in a YouTuber. Personally, I like the games not only because of their similarities to things like Silent Hill, but also that they're relatable to people with depression. Whether or not you're an adult or a young person, I think dark times in your life can really change your perspective on the world. 
and sometimes just makes you a crooked man. Anyway, mm -hmm. I've been glad to help work on this project, and until next time, thanks for playing. That's so cool. Hey there, this is Cyril, and I voiced Eric. I hope you enjoyed the game, and what a great game it was, right? Thanks to everyone who worked on it, especially Yuri. This was my first try at voice acting, so I hope you liked it. It was such a great experience for me. Moving on, I'm a freelance artist. If you're interested in seeing my work, then just visit my website. A real amazing thing this was for me, and I hope that it was for you as well. Take care, player. Until next time. This is really cool. Hey there. I was actually thinking about saying I'm not actually the voice actor of Toad, but in the end, Toad. Yeah. So, great thanks to Uri, the great game's equally great creator, who was also really sweet along the creation of the game, Vision Person, Her Majesty the Translator Queen, and the voice actors, who helped bring this together with their lovely voices. And of course, we can't forget you. Good job for getting the good ending, by the way. Oh, and just a note, if I do something in the later days, it probably won't be in the same name. Something like Nobody, maybe. I have a Twitter with that name. But then again, who knows? Anyways. <clears throat> Thank you. I love you. That's super cute! <laughs> Serenity Harper here, the voice of Helena Baring. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on beating the game. I hope you had fun playing and like the ending, or ending Sugox. Yeah, we'll go back it's for that later. It's a pleasure and an honor to work on this project alongside everyone. I never expected to get Helena's role since it's my first time voice acting, and to tell you the truth, my audition was very messy. <laughs> I have quite a lot of things to talk about, but in order to avoid bogging down players with minutes upon minutes of talking, I have written my overall thoughts about the game down on my blog. It will be made available once people have reached this to avoid spoiling stuff. For those who are interested in reading it, the blog is helenabaring.tumblr.com. I'll check it out later. Thank you again for playing the boogeyman. If you ever want to talk, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Serene Harbor. I'll give you warm hugs and pats on the back for a job well done. <laughs> Alright, that sounds weird. Anyways, <laughs> take care always and catch you later. This is awesome. Hi Keith. Hello everyone, my name is Max. To most people on the internet, I'm known as Blue Neon Light Show. On YouTube, I go by Epsilon and I voice Keith with this. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. Lots of names. This was the first time I tried voice acting, so... It was really yeah. good, I like Keith's Sorry voice. I didn't do as good of a job as I could have. It's really been an honor doing this for Yuri. I honestly didn't expect getting the part. Some friends on Skype said that they were trying out for the Boogeyman, and I thought it would be fun to try. Turns out, Yuri liked my voice, so imagine my surprise when I actually got the part. I really like playing the role as Keith. Uh, I always like the, the cold-hearted characters that work on the side of justice, and is willing to do anything to save the day. Kind of like Jack Bauer, I guess. Or Batman. Anyway, uh, please try out the other games whenever you get the chance. There's the Sandman, the Crooked Man. I mean, go and check them out if you haven't yet. Thank you for playing through the game, keeping me alive, and more importantly, thank you for saving my life. I'm sure Suri will be happy that you saved Helena, too. Unless <laughs> you got the other four endings first. Yeah, which I will get, but just then, not uh, for this. Anyway. Feel free to talk to any of us. We all have Skype. Mine is neon.l.show. I should probably stop talking now. <laughs> uh, congratulations and good night. Okay, this video is taking way too long, so um, let's get Hello, through everyone. this fast. I'm Ro, the voice of David Hoover. Which I love! Thank you for playing the Boogeyman. Amazing voice as acting. Fun playing as I did voicing it. Thank you, Uri, for making this game. And thank you, VG Person, for translating it, helping Uri and making some 2D Japanese indie horror games available for English speakers to play. So, I initially came upon Uri's games on VG Person's website. The first of these uh, that I played was The Crooked Man. On my first playthrough, I spoke out all of David's lines to myself, just for fun. I quite liked David's everyman character. He was someone we could all relate to because of the things he'd done and seen. He's also really kind and loves to help. He's the kind of soft-spoken protagonist that everyone loves or loves to hate, which you see often in anime and manga. Despite being an avid fan of anime and manga, I found it hard to capture that kind of character with my voice. 
When I auditioned for a role in The Boogeyman, I had no idea it would be a game that ties together all the characters of Uri's previous other games. So, when I learned that I would be the voice of my favorite character, I was very thrilled. Now I am David Hoover. I have a very, very old YouTube channel that I've never uploaded to before, but I'm going to start uploading voice acting clips, games, and whatever I can think of. He's, he sounds so much different is now. YouTube.com slash Rokurol. That's R-O-U-K-U-R-O. And yes, I know, I spelled that particular name wrong. It won't have much for now, but I'll be uploading more as time passes, and hopefully people will like it. Oh, and if you want me to voice act for your game or project, feel free to send me a message at that channel. Alright, this is gonna take way too long, so I'll do the others ones um, for myself. I'm not gonna do the bad endings. Oh, wait, here I have comments from the translator feature with Crucial Helper and the developer of the book man, feature of translates one, so my games, English, and Um Yeah, blah, blah. All about. Uh, okay, this is all about uh, the, uh, the person who translated. Uh, you should pause it if you want. Anyway, I'm gonna do the rest for myself, Brandon and the Boogeyman. Okay, maybe Brandon and the Boogeyman, because that's interesting. Hello, I'm the voice for. The Boogeyman. <laughs> oh, sorry. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Osity, the voice of the Boogeyman. But uh, you could just call me Dave. I must say, it was an honor to be able to work with Uri and all the other actors and actresses on this game. I've been a big fan of Uri's games for some time. And when I saw that she was having an audition for a new project, I thought I might try out for a role. I'm not a professional voice actor, in my opinion, but I have done some voiceover work in my past, and I have done some scary story readings. You can find them on YouTube if you're interested. Just search on my name. Anyway, I auditioned and now I'm here in Uri's game. I really That's enjoy awesome. bringing her character, the Boogeyman, to life. Helping Uri create this game was a fun and rewarding experience for me, and I'm very glad to have been a part of it. I'm also glad that you decided to play this game and have made it this far. Congratulations. I hope you enjoyed playing the Boogeyman. Okay, last one is Brandon. I'm gonna skip Shirley, Stevie, and uh, Lance for now. Hi, I'm the Overlord Bear. You can call me Tob or Tobby. Or maybe Tobbs. I know. What do you want to call me? Just this character didn't make me think he was anyway, the Boogeyman. I voiced Brandon Dumont here in Orisan's The Boogeyman. I'd like to thank Orisan for letting me be in this project. I'm glad to be a part of the making of an awesome game in Orisan's awesome Strange Men series. And I'm glad that I have met and made friends with certain people in the production group. How difficult was figuring out the puzzles in the game? Kinda. How difficult was figuring out the identity of the person behind the mask of the fake boogeyman? A lot. I'd like to know, though I think Orisan would like to know that and more of your thoughts about the game even more. Also, I'd like to say that if I were a character in the TBM story, I think Brendan would probably do one of three things. Number one, place me at main character level, maybe even at protagonist level, considering my liking for heroism. Number two, turn me into a button monkey that doesn't get killed during the plot, but gets tortured for comedy, for Brendan at least, a lot because of my social awkwardness. And three, kill me because I was pretty nosy and then ended up knowing too much about his plans. Maybe he would do a mix of the three choices. Indeed, being one of Brendan's victims is a freaking scary thought. Oh, yep. and I'd like to know your honest constructive feedback on my voice acting. Also, if you want to know more about me, please go to the overlordbear.wordpress.com. Oh, and uh, maybe you'll find something interesting if you go to Brennan's Castle, the Tumblr.com. I will check that now, out. Excuse me while I take over and renovate a certain blonde Two Faces castle. Mm hmm. I like this voice acting. I like the fact that he actually talked fast. Oh, because it fit his character. And then that all the more doesn't makes you surprised that he is the boogeyman because he talks so fast and he talks so slow and the, the whole thing is different but yeah i'll skip those three i'm gonna keep it for now i've been going on way too long this could have been three episodes but now it's one episode so i'm not gonna do the bad endings for this game because that will take way too long and it would be like two three four more episodes you can try those to get those for yourself um apparently you get a bad ending if david dies if sophie dies if both of them dies and if none of them dies, but you don't get all the happy ending flags regarding the cutscenes you get about Helena. That's what I learned. Uh, if, you, if you don't get all those uh, things with the voice, uh, with the videotapes about Helena, but you do get all the happy, uh, uh, all, the, all the way to the happy ending, but just not all those um, camera things with Helena, you get another ending, a good ending, but not the happy ending or something, I, I've been told. I don't know. So, I'm just gonna keep it like here for now. This was an amazing game. Good job to the voice actors, good job to Uri for making this game. Uh, it may take a while before I start playing the Hangman, because I've been playing three RPG games in a row now. 
So, but I will play the Hangman. I will. Because I want to see the finishing of these four games. But it just might take a while because I played Blood Covered Sandman. Uh, I played uh, Course Party Sandman and then this game. So that's three RPG games in a row. So maybe something in between. But for now, that's it. So this was Dast with the Boogeyman. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Hey guys, if you like this video and want to see more, it would be great if you could support me on Patreon. Even one dollar helps me out already if enough people do it. Thanks in advance!